Hey guys, today let me take you on a journey in the Mediterranean food space. You've heard of falafels? I'm sure you have. Falafels are traditionally made with chickpeas, parsley and of course a few more flavorings. Today's recipe is a tweak on the traditional one and this one is a chicken tweak. I'm showing you ladies and gentlemen, chicken falafels. Let's begin. Speaking about falafel, like I told you before, falafels are traditionally made with chickpeas. Now I have taken chickpeas, which are of course soaked overnight and kept ready. But in case you're starting right from scratch, you need to buy chickpeas, of course, from the grocer. Uh, you need to wash it at least two to three times in running water and then keep it soaked overnight or a minimum of eight hours. Drain out that water and that's where you land onto these chickpeas. Now you take these, and you add in a few flavorings. Now, it's a very simple recipe per se, but you need to follow this with precision because a lot of these ingredients have some reticent water content. Now, to control that also, you need to add in a few ingredients. So, beginning with red onions, roughly cut of course. Do not spend your time in uh, finely cutting or finely slicing or anything like that, just roughly cut. To this, I'm adding in another layer of flavor, cloves of garlic, in this case, lots of it. Falafels, of course, are extremely well pronounced in terms of its flavor. You're keeping all those elements intact and just taking it to another level. I'm spiking it up with green chilies. What you can do is add in a combination of course of green chilies and chili flakes. So that also kind of gives it a nice balance. Now traditionally parsley goes in the recipe but because I'm kind of Indianizing it, glamorizing it, my tweak on the traditional if you heard it right, I'm adding in fresh coriander lots of it and at this stage last but not the least chicken mince now this is one of the heroes of this recipe of course like i told you before traditionally this does not go in the recipe but this is like my chicken take on the falafel let's give this a good mix Once this is mixed well, the next step is to grind this. Now grinding is also a very critical step here because the onions have some water content, the chicken has some water content, the garlic has some water content, and of course, the chickpeas also have water. Now, you need to grind this in a jar without use of water because eventually you need to deep fry this or shallow fry this. Choice is completely yours, but water is going to play a major role in this. So avoid water completely. Let's add this in. And the next step is to grind this into a coarse paste. Let's do that. This needs to be nice and coarse, like I said. Do not get into making a smooth paste. Also, just as a reminder, no water was added while making this paste. We need it coarse, we need it drier, and that's the beauty and magic of this falafel mix. Let's move on to the next step. To begin with, let's transfer this in a deeper bowl because we still have a few more ingredients to mix in this recipe. Another thing that you need to actually note while grinding is you may have to keep turning it in and around in the mixer jar because it may just get clogged at the bottom and you need to keep stirring it so that the grinding is even. Let's add in the ingredients that I was talking about, beginning with lots of cumin because that's going to add in a wonderful flavor note and a bite while eating the falafel. And to control the moisture in this recipe, I'm going to add in gram flour. Last but not the least, salt as required. Now again, because this is almost like a fritter, it's a falafel, the salt will get dehydrated. Imagine the water content in the falafel is all going to get evaporated. So that's when the salt gets slightly more concentrated. So salt at this stage could be slightly lesser. You can make your first falafel, taste it only if you feel that the salt could be added a little more, then add more salt. Let's mix this well and ensure that the gram flour has no lumps. Mix this well. While this is getting mixed, I'm also ensuring that the flame is lit which has of course a little bit of a pan with some oil 
Now traditionally uh, falafels are deep fried. What I'm doing is I'm shallow frying them, but I've used slightly more oil. So it's kind of in between deep frying and shallow frying. Now coming to the shape of a falafel. Traditionally, you get a falafel press. Now in case if you have that, by all means go all out and use that press. You can otherwise make this like a tikki, like a cutlet, uh, literally like a bhajia, uh, like a fritter, like a croquet, uh, like a donut. The choice is completely yours. What I'm doing is I'm making them like little tikkis, like little nuggets. So let's do that. Now if you see this mix uh, closely, it's slightly sticky and that's exactly how we want it because the basin has to get activated in this. Also, if it's too crumbly, it's all going to split in the oil and we do not want that to happen. So once you achieve this kind of a texture and a consistency, you're going to wet your fingers and punch in a lemon sized ball like so. With very light hands, you're going to toss it, press it and that's where you have the falafel tikki done and ready. Just ensure that it does not have any cracks or crevices and drop this in hot oil. Well, if you make these stickies properly, you will not feel the need of adding any soda or any aeration of any kind. Now, if you see how light these have become, when you drop these in oil, in just a few seconds, they're all rising to the top. And that's the beauty of a good falafel mix. While frying fritters of any kind, it's important to avoid overcrowding because it all gets clogged. But there are also few fritters that need overcrowding in terms of say a kanda bhaji because you immediately need to drop the temperature of oil because that way they become nice, crisp and golden brown all evenly. But in case of falafels, do not overcrowd because they need to become nice and crisp on the outside and the cooking time will not be so much because it's got kabuli chana, it's got chicken and they all cook relatively in a shorter time. Let's flip this with very light hands. Once these are fried nice, crisp and golden brown, let's transfer these on an absorbent tissue paper. And similarly, let's start shaping and frying the rest of the chicken falafels. With this, our chicken falafels are fried and ready. Off goes the flame. Let's begin plating. With this, your chicken falafels are done and ready. Make this for family, make this for friends and see the smile on their faces. Well, let me try one. I loved it. And I can assure this is soon going to be your family favorite. This is me, the Bombay chef, Varun Namdar, signing off. Bye.